Uh, Phil Boaz, who uh, is in Phoenix, he uh, works for the Arizona Republic, has covered uh, the senator during his career for, for quite a while. And, uh, Phil, you know, we think of John McCain so much as a national figure, even an international figure. But explain what he meant to the state of Arizona. Well, he was very important, obviously, to our state, and I think you heard a little bit of it there, the, the, the sadness that is being felt here in Arizona with Rick Davis reading that final letter from him and, uh, you know, the tears and the choking voice. I think there's been a lot of that and a lot of that feeling here in the state. We, had, we have a story about how uh, there were no American flags in front of the mortuary where the, the body lay in rest. And um, there, one Arizonan went to the store to buy a bunch of American flags to take them over there. And when people at the grocery store found out what he was doing, they all started pitching in to help buy them. And that's how people feel about John McCain. We've had people hanging flags from overpasses, people that lined the route from which the motorcade came from, from his home up, uh, up in northern Arizona. So there, there's been a tremendous outpouring, a, a strong feeling that he lived a great life and that he was a good man and we're grieving for the family and what they're going through. John McCain wasn't from much of anywhere. He was a naval brat. His dad was an admiral. He traveled around as a kid. Then obviously he spent all those years uh, in captivity in Vietnam. Uh, he goes to Arizona, uh, first portrayed as a carpetbagger, but the state embraced him. How and why? Uh, because that you just described the the majority of Arizonans. We're all transplants from somewhere else. We all came from another state, another country, somewhere else. There are very few native Arizonans. They're, we're surprised when we see them. We, we've usually traveled from afar. Our families were raised elsewhere. We were raised elsewhere and came here. We've seen it with our sports teams because, you know, teams will come from out of state and they'll have a big following in Phoenix because, say, we have a lot of people from Boston or L.A. or you know, Denver. And that's just the way we Arizonans are. We have sort of shallow roots here in this state, in this remote part of the country. Uh, but we, we are beginning to dig deeper and to feel stronger about our sense of place. And McCain really reflected that because he had a real love of Arizona for the territory, for you know the big sky that we have, the, for the sports teams we have. He had a tremendous pride in being an Arizonan. Uh, he was famously opposed to pork barrel spending, uh, at least didn't like to portray himself as bringing home uh, those type of uh, benefits of having a powerful senator from your state. What were the issues and topics um, on which he won over Arizona voters? I think that was a big one, and I think if, as you look at achievements, it was the downward pressure that he kept on Washington. Somebody needs to do that when you have governments uh, spending other people's money. Often when you spend other people's money, you're not doing it with a, a lot of responsibility and care. And so it takes certain leaders to stand up and say, no, we have to be careful with the public's purse. And he constantly did that year after year after year. And it's tough because you have a lot of people back home who want him to bring home the bacon, so to speak, to, you know, so they can put his name on a building that he built for them, but he wasn't like that. He wanted to, he wanted to make sure that the that Congress was a good steward and the Senate was a good steward of the people's purse. Some folks have described him as irreplaceable, and yet he will be replaced. Doug Ducey, uh, your state's governor, has the job. Uh, do we have any sense of who might be on that list? Well. Nobody knows for sure. So that, you know, it's a tightly held secret if there's a decision already made. Uh, there are names being floated about. Uh, first and foremost is Cindy McCain as, uh, you know, the, the, as someone who might hold the seat in her husband's stead. Um, she is a, a, a dynamic person, a very well-spoken, um, has been a leader herself in the community uh, and on some major national issues including the human trafficking. Others include uh, the governor's chief of staff, Kirk Adams, longtime Republican in the legislature, uh, kind of uh, right of center, 
uh, sort of guy, uh, middle-aged. Uh, Barbara Barrett, who is a businesswoman, was the first uh, Republican woman to run for governor in Arizona. And uh, interestingly, an aviator. She uh, actually uh, had the distinction of, of flying an F.A. 18 Hornet as a civilian woman onto an aircraft carrier. So she and McCain had that kind of in common. And another name is John Kyle, a uh, uh, former U.S. Senator, uh, gravitas, well regarded in the Senate. Um, uh, Karen Taylor Robeson, who is a businesswoman, dynamic, younger, uh, would be kind of a legacy choice, someone who uh, would have a high ceiling. Uh, John Shattuck, former congressman. So that, and then Eileen Klein is another uh, middle-aged woman, uh, former chief of staff to Jan Brewer. She he would also probably be seen as a legacy choice, somebody with a lot of dynamism, a lot of smarts. Uh, you guys have this primary coming up, so let's just, while I have you, talk a little bit more Arizona politics. Um, sure. Governor Ducey will, will have to make this pick. Uh, he's up for re-election himself. Uh, how does the pick play into his, uh, his race? Well, it's it's not going to play into the primary because he doesn't really have much of an mm -hmm. opponent. He, he he's uh, facing an opponent from from the margins who who didn't really prepare to run for governor. Uh, in the general, I don't think it has anything but nominal impact. Only because all of these names, if it's among these names that I've discussed here, they're all within the realm of responsible mainstream. Uh, nothing outlandish. None that would get him in trouble with the voters. I think. Uh, and Arizona's losing, you're losing both your senators. Jeff Flake, the junior senator, decided not to run again. Uh, walk us through the candidates for his seat. So for uh, the, the leaders there are Martha McSally, uh, who is leading in the Republican primary in the polls, and she's facing off against Kelly Ward and then against uh, Joe Arpaio, the former Maricopa County Sheriff. And just uh, uh, for disclosure, uh, I'm related to the sheriff. I married his daughter, so <laughs> we have an interesting relationship. Uh, and then uh, the uh, on the Democratic side, we have Kirsten Cinema, who is, was a longtime legislator, uh, congresswoman, uh, went from being a street protester to being a, a, a centrist Democrat uh, who reaches across the aisle, very well liked in the state. Phil Boaz uh, from the Arizona Republic. So much good stuff. Really appreciate your time uh, this afternoon. You, you bet. My pleasure. Okay, full coverage of the primaries in Arizona as well as Florida uh, starts tomorrow night at 5 p.m. during Red and Blue. And then we'll carry on as results come in late through the night. We'll have it all for you right here on CBSN.